Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden. And in this video, it's a bit of a follow-up to my previous video on coppicing and that ancient practice that is an absolutely fantastic way of making some really good habitats for so much wildlife. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in at the end of this one. It's well worth checking it out in terms of a management plan for your garden. So apologies for the noise right behind me. I've got a busy road today. So you have to you have to bear with me. I'll try and speak up a bit. But in this video, I want to talk to you about some great ways which you can recycle all of your cuttings that you produce on site. So whether that's from cutting down a hazel shrub or whether just trimming off some back some brambles or some roses or clipping hedges, anything like that, do not throw it away. Don't put it in your green bin. Keep it in your garden. In this video, I'm going to show you why. Now, follow me. This is where I've been working today. I've been doing some coppice management. Now, some people say that coppicing is uh, not a very good technique. They don't like to use chainsaws. They don't like to use hand saws. Nature's best left to its own devices, which yes, which yes, in some cases it absolutely is. However, I'm going to show you a few ways in which you can reuse some of the material from coppicing some of these uh, shrubs and small trees and things to actually create more and better habitat for wildlife. So take a look at some of this. Now, this is what I mean about recycling deadwood. Now, deadwood is an absolutely incredibly valuable resource for so much wildlife, particularly beetles and insects, because of course a lot of larvae of a lot of beetles, particularly stag beetles and lesser stag beetles. If you haven't seen my stag beetle video already, do check that out on the channel. There's some amazing grubs that these things have that I was fortunate enough to see and film last year. However, they eat the rotting timber of a lot of trees and stumps. So deadwood, always keep it in your garden another car uh, but deadwood is absolutely brilliant and particularly if you're going to keep some put it upright in the ground so and I'll do another video on this later on in the year as to how it can help wildlife however just behind me here you can see there's a big old branch off this ash tree which as you can see uh, it's just dying back it's um, it's not got ash die back the tops just died out naturally um, and it's a covered in, it's a bit covered in ivy but absolutely the tops are loved by the woodpeckers there's been three male woodpeckers chasing each other around for territory this morning and this afternoon while i've been working so it's fantastic but this is a big branch as you can see that has dropped off this ash tree and it's just been left now i think that's brilliant because not only is it providing a habitat let's, let's, let's get down and have a look i'll show you now these are some of the fungi i'm not an expert on fungi but they're rock hard at the moment so these are last year's fungi from last autumn but obviously deadwood provides a great habitat for a lot of fungus so that's one positive the other one is of course it's going to cre create a lot of habitat for beetles insects everything i've just spoken about so deadwood but i mean that one's just been left but i'm going to show you what i've been doing with it and some of the other bits uh, that i've been finding as i'm clearing out this woodland spin around now so you can see I've just been managing this area you may think it looks a bit tidy but uh, in actual fact the process that I'm going through now to manage this site it's a new site I've taken on in Leicestershire and I'll be coppicing the shrubs on a rotation so they'll be coppiced sort of every year but only a third of them some of you may have seen that and again coppicing video check that out but I'm only going to coppice a third of the shrubs because uh, that way there is always successional regrowth, there's always habitat for lots of birds to fly through to feed to find caterpillars and that sort of thing, moth larvae, stuff like that, particularly on things like the goat willow, which I have done a, a previous video on how it's good for bees and it's just coming out here as well now. Um, if you can see, there's one that I've left up here. You might just be able to see the, uh, the goat willow coming into flower. Absolutely lovely, sort of furry, silvery, flowers at the moment looking really good one or two bees around the top of that now this might look like a pile of rubbish but it's actually called a dead hedge now a lot of people ask me about dead hedges and dead hedges are a really brilliant way of providing two things really one a potential nesting site for sorry about the cars a potential nesting site for hedgehogs so in the autumn time you can pile all your brush up and hopefully you'll get a little prickly visitor in there but also really, really, really good for birds. So things such as dunnock, blackbird, uh, robin, the wren, they're all gonna find 
great nesting potential in some of these stacks because of course a lot of predators can't get in all right weasels stoats potentially but a lot of birds obviously nest in hedgerows so dense cover like this is very good particularly when it's quite prickly <laughs> i've got the scars to prove it this morning i've been fighting some blackthorn and some bramble and dog rose and all sorts uh, but a dead hedge and i'll show you i've just been doing some kind of sporadic piles of this uh, along the edge of this existing hedge line which as you can see is really nice if you can get some of this stuff in the bottom of your hedges as well this is obviously leaf mold good old leaf mold uh, you can't beat it really uh, this is where the client just pours all their or tips all their leaves each year and it's full of good stuff full of insects and worms and all sorts so get some of that if you can at the bottom of your brash piles as well it's going to make some good nesting material for hedgehogs when it dries out through the summer um, so you can see I've kind of selectively thinned through we're crossing over here a bit into the practice sorry about the cars again the practice of coppicing territory however as I say do check that video out but I've selectively left some of these as a lovely um, rowan tree here which is doing really nice a big gelder rose that's staying uh, and we've got some cracking crab apples this was nothing when the client came here about 30 years ago I think now and look at this wonderful copse and tree belt that they planted that is a crab apple <laughs> how many crab apples have you seen that big so brilliant to see that many trees and shrubs developing because this was just lawn the whole thing was lawn front to back and you might be able to see the house it's just down the end there so quite a quite an extensive garden some really lovely shrubs in here as well holly I'm digressing from the main topic itself a little bit sorry but i thought you would like to see some of these so more byproducts of these coppicing works all this brash lorry sorry <laughs> all this brash has been stacked so it's going to create another dead hedge so again we're, we're the middle of march now so for your blackbirds robins wrens dunnocks it's going to create some really nice habitat for building nests in. Also, another byproduct of coppicing. These brilliant logs, of course. So I've been making some log stacks as I go. Don't chuck any of this stuff away. It's all invaluable. Great for frogs, uh, newts and everything to overwintering as well. So really good habitat. But if you can, stick some of these upright. And I'll, as I say, I'll do a video on... Um, how you can create some upright distanding deadwood in your garden in time because that is a really good source uh, as well so for things like a stag beetle lesser stag beetle um, then that is brilliant because they need to have rotting timber underground they don't just live on top of the ground otherwise they'd just be eaten by everything nice big tasty snack a larvae of a stag or a lesser stag is so coming down to the bottom of the garden now the last but not least swap hands arms a bit dead <laughs> um, you can see behind me here this wonderful pile of brash that the client has been adding to over the years he's got some grass cuttings in there and the best bit about it is is they have not one not two not even three or four but five regular hedgehogs in the garden which is absolutely fantastic shame about the road behind me um, not the ideal habitat for hedgehogs to live next to but uh, they very 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 rarely see one flattened because there is everything the hedgehogs need in this garden they've got the herbaceous section down the bottom which is full of insects and worms and everything else that the hedgehogs are going to eat they've got some brilliant hibernating potential here and they've also got some now some dead piles of brash down that hedge line right the way back to the house so really good so a bit about how you can recycle all the waste product what you would class as waste product in your own back garden so that's all your cuttings your trimmings your leaf everything else make one of these make a brush pile stick it out the way in a corner i know most of you probably have compost bins which is brilliant but get yourself one of these they are absolutely fantastic birds hedgehogs beetles you name it frogs toads they'll all appreciate it so final two cars of the video if that hasn't give you given you enough of a bit of inspiration there to go and create these habitats then i don't know what will so 
thanks very much for watching guys really appreciate it i promise the next video won't have so much traffic in it <laughs> as i say do check out the coppertin video that i'll put a link into at the end now and hopefully it will give you some ideas as to how you can manage some of these shrubs and trees in your own back garden a bit more sympathetically and how it can benefit so much wildlife thanks very much for watching i'll see you soon mm -hmm.